Hey everyone, it is Thursday, and you know what that means, that I'm on Twitter and using the hashtag KDFAQ. And many of you have sent me your questions through my um, DMs as well as in my, um, when you give the at Katie Morton or you use the hashtag in the Twitter land. I found them. And I actually have five questions I'm going to go over today. And the final question I also am going to share a little bit of help, like hopefully helpful health information. So stay tuned till the end um, for that info and I will um, hopefully will help save some lives. Okay? So the first question that I have on Twitter is something honestly very simple and I have some great tips for this. And many of you said that you struggle with this too. And the question is, do you have any tips for how to re remember to take my medication? I'm always forgetting. And to be honest, that's very normal. Everybody forgets, especially if you have those medications where you have to take like three times a day. Whenever I get sick and I'm on antibiotics, I'm like, ah, three times a day is hard. But our phones are amazing. And you can put it in your calendar and you can say recurring event. You can put it whatever time you want to take. If you have to take it right after you eat sometime, maybe put it around dinner time. Or you can put the reminder right after breakfast, depending on what time of day, and say recurring event daily. Ba -bum! And it will remind you. And you can set it to give you an alert, which I always do because if it, my phone doesn't go bink and let me know, I don't go into my calendar looking for stuff. I'm always, I have a paper calendar for, um, for my clients, so I don't look in my phone's calendar. So that's my best tip. Um, also, setting up any kind of reminder if you do use a paper one, you can write it down in there. But I find that to be the best. All of my clients use it, and everybody has a phone or an I, iPhone Touch, even if you don't have a phone phone, um, some device that can remind you. So I would put it into your Outlook calendar or your regular iCal calendar. Number two. My family recently found out about my self-harm, and now they just won't leave me alone. How can I explain that I need some space? Now, this can be really hard, and I think part of the conversation that we have to have when stuff like this is going on is kind of the uncomfortable stuff, where we have to talk to them a little bit more about it so that they better understand it. Now, that could be sending them one of my videos. If you think that one of my videos helps explain it more, I would check out, you know, search through my self-harm videos to find one that's a little bit better. I also have some about how to talk to parents and how parents talk can talk um, to you about it so you can forward those on. Um, definitely use my information if you think that will be helpful. Something that I do for clients a lot of time when their pa parents come in with them and they're freaking them out because they're being the food police or they're um, digging through the room and they find them in the room all the time looking for self-harm objects and blah, 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 right? I find it the most helpful to say something to the effect of, and this is me saying it to a parent as a therapist, so you can change the words as you see fit. But I always say something like, you know, Mr. and Mrs. Smith, I know you're very concerned about your child, and I know that what, you're, what they're doing to themselves seems very scary, and we can assume that they're trying to commit suicide, and all of these things that go along with self-harm, and we worry that if we don't pay attention, it's going to get worse and that they'll actually harm themselves more. But what we need to do most, and this is where it's gonna be kinda of hard because we have to tell them what we need from them, okay? So start thinking prior to talking to them of what you need from them. And I would say well, what, um, you know, what he or she needs most is just for you to be there and to be understanding that it's difficult, there's a lot going on, the self-harm is not a suicide attempt, it's an outlet for um, pain that we, that we have felt or it's an outlet for an experience. You can kind of see where I'm going with this. I find it most helpful to keep it very short so you're telling them what you do it for. You can say, you know, mom, my, my cutting on my arms isn't me trying to commit suicide. It's, it's just my only outlet right now and I'm trying to find new ones. But, um, you know, until then I don't need you watching me like a hawk because whether or not you're watching me doesn't help how I feel and why I actually do it in the first place. Does that make sense? And leave your tips behind, below. All of you have um, been in similar situations, I'm sure, and you can share what worked for you. Um, I would also, during this time, ask to get to see a therapist. I would ask for that because it's those, this is the time when they're worried and they're concerned. And you can say, you know, please stop watching me. You're driving me crazy. I really just need to see someone so I can start talking about this. Is that okay? And most likely they'll be like, yes, let somebody else try to talk to you because I don't know what to do. I'm freaking out. Because parents, the main reason that they, you know, watch us so much is just because they love us and they worry and they really don't know what else to do. So we have to kind of tell them and guide them for what we need. Okay, so take time to think about what you need before you talk to them. What you need from them is what I mean. Okay, number three, what's the difference between a relapse and a slip? 
Um, a slip is something that happens once or twice, and it's not back to back. I think of a relapse as like when we slide back to what we used to be doing. Um, like I never put numbers to things, so I'm not going to do that now, but it's like if we, if it's eating disorder behavior and we used to do X, this certain behavior X amount of times, so that's binge, purge, restrict, exercise, whatever. We used to do it for a certain amount of time or whatever number you equate to that. Um, and then one day we, we take a couple and we're like, ugh, that was a bad idea if it was like laxatives, let's say. Or we, um, you know, binge and purge once and we're like, damn it, I slipped up. That's a slip. And it will happen off and on. A relapse is when we start slipping and we just go back to the way it used to be. So we're doing the, the most that we used to do right before we started recovery. So I always think of a relapse as us going back to the worst that it was or about that before we started recovery and a slip up is like oh I did it and I, I won't do it again and then like a couple weeks later oh I did another thing again but we don't just keep doing it okay and slip ups are normal so don't let the slip ups turn into a relapse you fight that voice you'd be like I deserve better I can do this you don't control me something like that <laughs> it is warm today I'm like getting I got too excited there I'm getting warm okay now, the final, oh no, question number four, I'm doing five today, sorry. Question number four, is there such a thing as TMI, too much information, in therapy? And the answer is no. We are here to listen, to help you feel heard and understood, and there's no such thing as TMI. Honestly, all of my sessions in another relationship outside of the therapeutic relationship may be considered TMI, but for me, I mean... If it's an eating disorder, I'm going to ask you when you last pooped and how much you ate of this and how, what are you doing with that? I mean, we're going to ask all sorts of questions. And if it, we're talking about a relationship, I may ask you if you had sex with that person. And there's no such thing as TMI. We're here to help. We're here to listen. We're not sharing that information with anybody um, unless it's like a health concern that we might share it with your physician if we have your approval. Okay? And the final question, question number five, the health information. I had a... Um, a follower who struggled to get a proper diagnosis for her meningitis and I found out um, and in the course of going through this sorry I'm just reading what she wrote she found out that there are symptom cards you can get a hold of the link for these symptom cards will be below it's actually a PDF you could print them out if you need them um, but I guess it's really really hard to diagnose and there are five different types of bac bacterial meningitis and many of them go unnoticed and undiagnosed and ends up making things worse for us so just the more we know, right? The more we share the information, the less people will be hurting, you know? And so her question was, how do we not fall back into our old eating disorder habits after being really ill? This is very hard and being sick, even if it's just a flu, can be very triggering. And the best thing that I can do for my clients is when we know they're coming back, let's say, because you, I know the meningitis, you were sick for a very long time, I double up on appointments. I'll see them twice a week for about a month. And this is obviously in a perfect world. I know everybody's different, but these are just some tips. So double up on appointments. I check in with them a lot. I make sure that their dietitian or their physician is on board. We go over a meal plan. Even if they've been off a meal plan for a while, we go back to a meal plan because sometimes we're even like um, have to eat a little less and work up to what our healthy regular meal plan is because if our body has been dehydrated or if we've you know not eaten uh, solid foods for a while or whatever the sickness may be, um, work with their dietitian and their physician and um, just follow it really closely. We kind of have to fight a little harder for a while. I know it's really triggering, but I also like them to keep fairly busy. So get back into some sort of a schedule, meeting with friends, going back to school, whatever it may be, um, and just regular check-ins. So that's my best tips and tricks for that. If you can, just do as many appointments, you know, get to see people um, so that they know how you're doing. So I hope that all the information was helpful. It's Thursday and tomorrow is Fana Live Friday. I can't wait because then that means that it's the freaking weekend and I'm excited. So anyway, I hope you all have a wonderful evening and I will be thinking of you all. I'm going to be reading through some things on my website right now and I've gotten almost caught up with Twitter and I'm, I'm doing as much as I can. So don't think that I'm not reading your comments and your questions and not thinking of all of you. So have a wonderful evening. I love you all. Bye.